My junk, I found this valve, um, trying to find some stuff on this just came along. It seems to be a gas type, damn it. It seems to be a gas type valve. I, I don't know that. I'll see if I can get any numbers in it to basically do a quick Google. There's an in and an out. What's also interesting is that the top here also has an in and an out. So, who knows? As gas coming here and here, and then this is the main flow. Is it's a pilot and that controls the main flow? I don't know, is that pressure using valve? Not sure. This seems to be able to turn out, right? And there's a cap here, there's some screws here. So let me clean it up a little and then just figure out, put and figure out exactly what they did. Put a wire brush, and I am seeing some symbol here. Not sure what that is, right? Um, TS11 here again, not too sure what that is. And then I noticed also, apart from these two in and out, that there's actually another port here, and there's an adjustment here. Didn't really pay attention to that before, so again, some kind of probably need a valve, I assume. Uh, this is best to get inside there cleaned up. And then on this side is a G, which again seems to suggest gas, so yeah, not really sure exactly what it is again. Still not seeing any kind of manufacturer's name that I could refer to, so the best I'm getting is TS11. I could try googling that, let me, let me try googling that. This is some kind of manufacturer's symbol I believe, but that would be impossible of course to enter into google because it's a registration mark but yeah if luck might strike and i'd be able to see something similar to this and be able to figure it out a lot lot simpler to find out <laughs> what it was than i thought uh first search ts11 gas valve and it came up this is apparently a robert shaw valve it's meant to shut off the main gas to the pilot in case the pilot out apparently the pilot has a thermocouple on it it generates a voltage the voltage is used to keep the gas you know um, flowing if the pilot out essentially the valve shuts off and then basically you have no more pilot and no more gas just leaking to explode so yeah and one quick sight maybe it's uh, just a could be an off number but anyway number of one site 122 us so this thing is pretty expensive it's uh, one of those restaurant resupply places but yeah this is a fairly expensive valve apparently it should be interesting to see how they've made this i think the first thing we do seeing that everything else seems to be pretty much tightly packed in and up here i don't know how easy this would be to open or whether this would make sense so let's take off those four screws and see what's inside 122 US, possibly working, possibly not working. I start to figure out how they actually do this electric thing here. Um, maybe that is isn't a gas port, maybe that's a port towards the, um, I don't see, maybe, I don't know how this voltage gets in here because I'm not seeing any ports for wires. But, yep, that's the explanation. I'll take a snippet of their um, actual explanation and throw it up right after this before it opens, so it could be right. This thing is full of springs. Um, there's a bottom of it, it is probably easier. So let's look at that first. This is an aluminum plate machined out of solid stock, it seems, with a gasket type material here. Sealing on a lip here that is machined. This is obviously sand casted. So, sand cast aluminum. We have a bit of flash here that was grind off. And essentially they put this on a machine, boil it all down, made a lip here for this to seal against. Incoming from there comes in here, I'm pretty sure it's in. Yep, that's in. Makes sense. In comes in here, goes down through there and comes back out on this side. So this is essentially pretty much the same thing like you get in a, a, a ordinary tap. Bottom side of this has a ring clipping and another spring here so it is a balance and that of course is real out to accept this so of course it's a balance between this spring on top being a little bit stronger 
right? And this spring will loop, which is all tied into this one up here. So it's a combination. This being strong enough to push it down, that's the use of the gas. Let go. Gas gets get through there and through the seal there. So the brains of it ready is in the top. So let's have a look at that. Let me see if I can get this out without flying everything away. As you can see, it clicks. It's a fairly decent. I would expect some noise there. The explanation that this thing is powered by thermocouple is probably impossible. A thermocouple does not generate the power required to do this. So it has to have an additional circuit in there that at a certain voltage the thermocouple is, you know, it, it trips maybe a transistor or some circuit that allows current to flow and pulls this in. And then at a lower voltage the system does not trip and does not flow power to pull this in. Because this seems like a solenoid to me. And that therefore is possibly the contacts screen and to that. Um, so yeah, it seems that this can open and this can have on clip. Beyond that, I do not see any other way in. This was a put on and pressed in. So this is a crimped in fit. If you interfere with this, probably never gonna get it to work again. So it comes back down to trying to unclip this spring and take this off. Let's take this off first, if it could be taken off, and then we get to this. That was on fairly tight. Uh, it had to grab the pliers. I didn't think it would have screwed. And gasket material, of course. And then, of course, another spring. As we expected, it would have something of the sort. So, yeah. This is some sort of well, square stock. Actually, it looks like wrong stock to the machine in the square, you know. But now it's sunny, a little pin that goes in there. Let's do a little further investigation. As I can tell, there's a small machined orifice in there, and that's where this wrong piece goes in. Right, so I've cracked this nut. Let me open this. I expect this is just a needle valve, just to restrict now, even if this is has a certain amount of gas coming through and you can't calibrate it, this will allow you to just kind of tighten up and calibrate exactly the amount because the machine interrupts between this and that would not give you the fine flow that you want. Turns out this top piece was just a cap and that sort of makes sense because you know turning this off wouldn't really be able to adjust you would end up with space there so yeah this is just a cap that's the actual valve in there that's the adjustment I'm not sure if I can unscrew it completely let's have a go and see the assumption that this is going straight through was wrong it's actually another gate valve just at the bottom. So the gas comes in, goes through that hole, goes through here and comes up actually against this seal. So this is really just more of a guide in there to keep it. So this space allows gas to come through and then it goes across through that small hole there. Right? So this here is a this came out, it's actually just a preci uh, precision machine the piece and what you do is you screw it down and it restricts how much can continue through and out here. So essentially it's a valve and a valve, a finer thread valve and then this is an automatic valve in the sense that it's the gas pressure that pushes enough and gets this open so that the gas continues flowing through. Through the air, come up and go out, as I said similar to this kind of gate valve through there, up, then down and out. So we've gone down one level again and this spring comes out by just prying it out from the sides, it's hooked on the edges here and around and then there was a circlip on the top of this and this spring and that's this plunger here. Right? This cannot come out as you can see. I think that was really as I said, pressed in here and essentially uh, deformed. So to get that out, you have to basically squeeze this up, cut it out, maybe grind it out, um, just to get it, you know, the correct time it has to pass back through the hole going down. So yeah, that can't really be done without completely destroying the device. And it does look, right, like this happens to be one of the contacts and 
this the other. So it does seem that this is a solenoid in here. That's the spring just to keep the solenoid in position because when this right here, there's no reason for that solenoid to come back out. That spring was a spring rudeness to get it back out. So yeah, let me see if I can get a resistance between the body and that contact and make a guess as to what kind of voltage it would have been. I'll probably start with something small like a 3.3 volts and then work my way up and see if I can get it. I probably wouldn't go with a full um, mains voltage but that's going the assumption by 12 volts I should get some kind of action here. So let me put back the spring together and uh, this is as far as we can get in. I mean there's nothing more already to see there. That's just a solenoid and uh, essentially with all the spring. This is the plunger. So yeah, nothing more to see again at this point. I am pretty much think covered everything. Now it's just a test if this really is the negative. If the solenoid works, maybe it doesn't work, maybe that's the flaw. I don't think this was actually a defective valve. I think I just took it out of a commercial or from I got. I think that's where this really came from. So I'm just gonna test this and see if you can get it to work. It's all back together. After several attempts, I have not been able to get this thing to retract. It didn't go at 3.3, 5 or 12 volts. I'm using a metal piece, a uh, steel piece that's getting warm, so it's pulling a bit of current. Not sure why it's not uh, pulling in, uh, but clearly the coil is, you know, it works. It goes at 0.7 ohms, so yeah, negligible resistance, but yeah, again, electrician meter, uh, kind of expected it to be a low resistance anyway. It's just going to be a coil of wire. So let me reassemble it. Um, Nothing else I guess you can see here. But it's an interesting, interesting little device. Um, hell of a thing. Didn't think that they used to do this. Not really sure why it had those three corner pieces there, inside there, on that what looks like stainless steel. That never became apparent. Um, but yeah, pulls in, raises this, allows gas to flow through here. So the main gas flows, and also we have us a little pilot here that essentially has a spring and feeds a certain piloted amount of um, flow through this. So it will cut off the main gas and cut off that gas. 